Good evening, I'm John Batchelor. The Republican debate in Manchester, New Hampshire has closed. All seven candidates acquitted themselves ably. The forum was quick. I'm joined by my colleagues. John Fund of the Wall Street Journal is in studio with me here in New York. Major Garrett of National Journal is at WMAL, my studio, my uh, affiliate and studio in Washington. And we're joined by Tegan Goddard of Political Wire. Four professionals, well, I'm the narrator, my three professionals. And we're going to start with these seven candidates and impressions. Now, Major and Mr. Fund and myself, we've been on the air uh, for the, first, the second hour of the debate. We did see the blogs. We did see what we could of the questions when we're, they were flashed up on the screen. We hold Tegan Goddard entirely responsible for every moment. So I begin with you, Tegan. You are surprised tonight. I watched you blogging. We all watch you very closely, Tegan. And you were immediately taken by Michelle Bachman and said, Sarah, stay home. Why so? Well, um, good evening, John. Um, Michelle Bachman was uh, proved herself to be extremely media savvy tonight. Uh, in, the, in the first round of questioning, she announced that she had formally filed the papers today for the campaign, and she made her announcement in really one of the best forums that, that she could have. All potential candidates like to try to get as much press as they can out of their announcement statements, uh, and I think that Bachman did an extremely good job. She also, throughout the debate, uh, proved herself to be uh, to be quite uh, quite witty, uh, to be um, uh, succinct in her sound bites. Uh, she threw a lot of red meat to the uh, Republican audience, um, and I think that I think that she was. I, I think she probably put a little bit of fear in Palin report uh, Palin supporters because if Sarah Palin thinks that she's going to be running now, I think she's got great competition for uh, a certain slice of this uh, Republican. Uh, audience right now. Mr. Fund, you were also pleased with how you saw uh, the, uh, Congresswoman Bachman perform tonight. Well, I think both Rick Santorum and Michelle Bachman did very well. The difference is Michelle Bachman is a proven fundraiser, $13 million for her last house race. She is was born in Iowa. She has uh, a real stake in the caucuses there. Uh, Rick Santorum, I think, is running for vice president, and he did a very good job of doing that. Michelle Bachman may not be the presidential nominee. She's a big long shot, but she is the new surprise star of this event. Uh, Miss, uh, Mr. Garrett, uh, Michelle Bachman was an unknown to me other than her health care statements. Did she grow her uh, portfolio tonight, in your opinion? Certainly. If you are a Republican who vaguely remembers seeing Michelle Bachman on the United State of the Union address, and we're unsure why she was doing delivering the Tea Party response to the president, and why was she looking at one camera and not the other, and maybe we're put off just a little bit by that. Maybe you're antagonized by what you might have thought was the media piling on her the next day. That's probably the most you've heard about Sarah, uh, about Michelle Bachman, but you've been sort of keeping your eye on her. Uh, if you watched tonight, you said, now I know why I kept my eye on her. I think for anyone who is either a Tea Party sympathetic, Tea Party activist, or just Tea Party aligned, they look at Michelle Bachman and say, you know, she handled herself very well. She said the one thing earlier, a very early part of the debate, that most Republicans want to hear, which is an enthusiastic, smiling leader or potential leader saying, it's in the bag, folks, we're going to win. Barack Obama is going to be a one-term president. The audience responded very favorably to that. I might have missed an earlier round of applause, but I think that was the first of the night. It was certainly, to my ear, the most enthusiastic. So on policy and on just striking the right tone, I thought Michelle Bachman was very effective. The most effective? No. But effective in her own right, and that's going to make her a player in Iowa. Tegan, Newt Gingrich tonight, after the brouhaha of his staff deserting him or he absenting himself from his staff, uh, his appearance tonight was relaxed, measured. I'm, he's a very good public speaker. He's quite good extemporaneously. Any indication tonight that he's going to change his uh, decision and get out of the race, or did he look like a man who's ready for the long haul? Oh, I think Gingrich is in this as long as he can. Um, you know, the question there will be, can he raise the money to uh, run a campaign? 
you know, through many of these early states, or can he even make it until early next year? And that remains to be seen. But right now, uh, you know, he's he's the guy trying to be the smartest kid in the class. Uh, he's the one who I think probably grasps most of the policy issues, uh, you know, at a much deeper level than the rest of the field. Um, the, th- that's the positive side for him. The negative side is that he's not very personable. He, he looks bored. He doesn't smile very much. And, uh, you know, I kind of was left with the impression that it's not surprising his staffers left. And uh, Mitt, uh, Mitt, 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 Mitt Romney looked like a comfortable front runner. We'll come back to him. But I want to go through quickly here, uh, sort of like, you know, you try to feed an Academy Award early in the performance. So uh, right. Mitt Romney's performance tonight, Major, were there any surprises in it? Is this the predictable Romney you expected? Now, again, we're a bit disadvantaged because we didn't see this the back half. And I've been following this principally on Twitter, which allows me to follow a wide range of commentary, both left and right. And a lot of people have uh, noted, with some surprise, that Mitt Romney said we need to get out of Afghanistan as soon as possible, made a minor league foreign policy gaffe or a major policy gaffe, depending on your point of view, saying that, uh, or implying that uh, the United States uh, would turn over control of Afghanistan to the Taliban army. Obviously, he meant the Afghan army. But to say we need to get out of there as soon as possible is not exactly what I think many people expected to hear someone who thinks of himself and by the polling data is a Republican frontrunner to say about Afghanistan and if that in fact becomes the dominant thematic approach of most Republicans seeking the presidency that's going to give President Obama more room than I thought I think he thought he would have from Republicans going into this very important decision to be made in the next month about the magnitude of this drawdown in Afghanistan. Mr. Fun, the part I saw of, of Mitt Romney, Governor Romney, is he was playing as the front runner to stay comfortably in charge of the fundraising and of the popularity and not risking very much tonight. It's a smart strategy. Uh, you don't want to make news. Uh, you want to say Mitt Romney was there, there were a bunch of bees buzzing around him trying to sting him, and they didn't really land on him. And uh, Tegan, Mitt Romney right now, because he's the presumptive leader and also he was second in 08, he's fresh to 012, does that mean the other candidates have to lay a glove on him? Because nobody even tried tonight, to my observation. No, that's exactly right. I think Tim Pawlenty was probably one of the bigger losers in this debate precisely for that reason. Uh, Pawlenty uh, has long been seen as the candidate who could be the anti-Romney candidate, uh, one of the final candidates in this race. Um, I have to imagine that if you're Texas Governor Rick Perry and you're considering and mulling looking over this race, maybe you're watching the race with a bunch of former staffers to Newt Gingrich, uh, that you see a pretty big opening here to possibly be the challenger to uh, Mitt Romney. I like that. Major, do you like that? that I, I agree. Yeah. I, I think Rick Perry is the one Republican whose name crops up and has cropped up more in the last two weeks than it was before. Unlike Governor Christie, unlike Paul Ryan, unlike Rudy Giuliani, who I think, if he got in, would have a very serious chance of taking on and winning this nomination. For a couple of reasons. Texas is the only state, I believe, and John Fund may correct me on this, in the union currently that during the recession has created more jobs than it's lost. 38% of all the jobs created are in Texas. Yes. Uh, that is a and compelling narrative. And his gubernatorial experience is not only better on the key issue, it's more recent. Better and more recent, better and contemporary, beats okay and forgotten, which is where Mitt Romney and both Tim Pawlenty, both Tim Pawlenty and Mitt Romney are and on the no. gubernatorial record front. Now, of course... You know, Rick Perry does have a major liability. Is the country ready for another Texas governor who likes to wear cowboy boots? Yes, but, but he's not a bushy. He's not a cor- bushy. Oh, no, no. He's a fact, ran fact, against he's, the Bush machine. And, and, the Bushies do and not and like Carl him. Carl Rove was behind K. K. Bailey, Bailey Hutchinson, Hutchinson his primary right. challenger. Now, but here's the thing. Lots of people in the country don't have a problem with a Texas governor. 36% of the delegates who will be elected... Uh, in the primaries and caucuses. 36% are from southern states. Newt Gingrich is not really a southern candidate. No. Rick Perry, there is no southern candidate right now. Rick Perry would be the only one. That's a pretty big market share to go after. John Fund, Major Garrett, Tegan Goddard. When we come back, there are three Tea Party candidates, to my knowledge, in New Hampshire right now. We've spoken of Michelle Bachman. We've mentioned briefly Rick Santorum. Herman Cain is the third. We'll speak to the Tea Party. 
Mr. Uh, Palenti was eager to welcome the Tea Party's participation. And then, of course, we'll turn to Tim Palenti himself. I'm John Batchelor.